welcome back to CMD. In another video, you join me back in the smart roads to Brabus Coop. It has been a long time coming. Apologies for the delay, but as you are about to hear, it hasn't been the easiest of journeys getting this thing roadworthy. So, let's go backwards to go forwards. Let's talk about what we've had to do to the car um, and how it all came about. So, if you haven't seen it already, I put a video up at the end of 2020 when the car had recently arrived with us um, having successfully bid on it at auction at collecting cars albeit actually that I wasn't successful uh, I was outbid and the car later became available because the person who won the auction didn't follow through with the purchase which was a real shame for the for the for the whole transaction really and everyone involved but I was contacted and asked if I wanted the opportunity to, to buy the car. So went through that process and uh, had the car registered back into the UK because it wasn't registered in the UK when it was purchased. Went through that process with the DVLA, that took about six weeks. Got it delivered, um, it was up at a unit in Berkshire or Oxford, somewhere around there I think. So organized, had it transported to home in Worcestershire and then the weather was awful and it was snowing so didn't use the car for a few weeks finally went to sort of get my head around it there was a lot of things going on at home so I didn't really have the time to to give it and then took it for a quick quick drive around try and get to know what the car was like a bit and there were a number of issues immediately um, something around the clutch uh, found it very hard to describe at the time but there was something definitely wrong with the gearing and the clutch the battery was pretty much flat and then when we got the car up on ramps it was a rust bucket underneath so whilst the bodywork is relatively quite neat all things considered I mean it has only done 27,000 miles now the car um, underneath was yeah, it obviously lived a very difficult life up in the mountains of Switzerland and France where the previous owner had used it um, in an attempt to spare things like his um, really nice Porsches and Ferraris, rightly so. But what we found there was um, one of the, obviously a lot of, a lot of rust, one of the uh, suspensions actually had cracks in it and so was an imminent imminent failure waiting to to happen but we were also when the car was getting warm getting um, slipping in the gears uh, especially around second and third so the car had to go to to a mechanic and uh, to someone who knows what they are doing for a service a once over and some repair work which I'll get into in just a moment the other things that we noticed was that two of the tires were letting out air quite quickly so they weren't holding air it was like they had slow punctures without having slow punctures and obviously I wanted to make sure things like oils brakes all the fluids and everything else was in good order so whilst I purchased it purchased it for what I considered to be a bit of a bargain I think I was rightly so concerned that there was going to be more to this car than met the eye but was ready for that at the time because we were in lockdown, not in a rush and happy to take on a bit of a project. That being said, if you ever get to work on one of these cars, you will very quickly become aware of how difficult they are overall to maintain in that these cars will go for hundreds and thousands of miles. Don't get me wrong, they're relatively actually reliable as long as they're looked after and serviced well where you have to be very careful is that you do need a specialist mechanic or a very good meticulous mechanic and and I can't do any more of this video without mentioning Lenchy's Garage in Worcestershire who have been utterly phenomenal in bringing this thing back to life which as you can see they have it genuinely drives better than new and it's um, an absolute hoot So let's talk about the serious work that's gone on because there's been 
quite a bit and I would be lying if I said I fully understood all of it. But one of the major issues was around uh, clutch and what we found was there was fluid leaking out of the gearbox. Now, from what I understand, that should be dry because there's no fluid in it. So fluid leaking out of there is obviously coming in from someone else before it leaks out, which is not good news in, in anyone's books. So in order to fix that, we, I say we, this is the Royal We. So we removed the gearbox and replaced the rear crankshaft seal and the gearbox input shaft seal. Not that I know what those things are. We also then replaced the clutch and flywheel unit, so brand new clutch, flywheel, reprogrammed the gearbox and the clutch settings. Took off the old springs and shock absorbers and fitted brand new Bilstein B14 with spacers, 20mm at the front, 25mm at the back, and then we removed a large amount of the suspension components, both front and rear, for complete restoration and painting, along with having the Brabus wheels realigned, straightened out, repainted in Hyper Silver, and fit with Yokohama tyres all around. The car also needed a new battery, nothing major, but obviously 14 years old. It might not have been 14 years old, it might have been the second one, but it was most certainly on its last legs. Yeah, the car was obviously struggling for power as soon as I got it, especially in the cold, even to turn over and start, and then to operate things like a, a roof, it wasn't there, so that was apparent quite, quite quickly. And the only other thing we've changed is the wiper blades, just put on some Bosch Streamline ones. So I feel like I've been relatively fortunate. I've got, you know, a good friend and a good mechanic who's looked after me and, and done a meticulous job. Those jobs have taken a number of months due to COVID, lockdowns, and all sorts. So the car disappeared for four months and, and at, some, at one point was been transported around Worcestershire to different garages due to lots of other circumstances so it really has been a difficult journey and birth to get the car back into our possession but my word wasn't it worth it what have I learned a little bit of patience goes a long way sometimes and to listen to the people who know what they're talking about. You know, I got guided once or twice, not by forums, but, but by people in the know. I was gonna go to the stock suspension shockers, and I'm so glad I didn't. These B14s are utterly phenomenal. The car is transformed in how it, how it corners. The spacers sound quite aggressive, but when you see how the car sits, you know, it's completely transformed the aesthetics along with the handling itself. I mean, it just lets you chuck it wherever you want to, casing, casing point. So yeah, I think be guided by the people. When you know you've got someone in their field who knows what they're talking about, listen to them. Do your own research and attack the forums. Smart Roadsters in particular have got a really fantastic group members forum called the Roadster.net and I would highly recommend that place. It's an absolute plethora of knowledge and people who know what they're talking about and have looked after and maintained these cars for decades. So if there's something you're not sure on, they really are a very friendly, very nice community that I would really highly recommend. And if you are thinking about getting a smart roadster, so long as you've got the time, my word, get it. And yeah, there's other cars that are, that are faster, more efficient, better gearboxes, but invest in something individual and enjoy that. Okay guys, I hope that's been a useful guide and um, 
and something that people can refer to if they need to. If you're new to the channel, Car Mad Dad CMD is in the process of becoming a 100% not-for-profit charity. That means your views, likes, subscriptions, any engagement at all, any purchases of the Car Mad Dad t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, bottles available at controlandshift.com, any revenue we generate at all from anywhere is all going 100% to making a big difference in other people's lives. So if you like what you see, hit that like button, give us a subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank you so much for the support so far. It really does mean the world. Cheers.